It's like we're in a Kumsitz. Hashem Chevra, we are back, we are ready, we are firing it up. I stop the music at the worst times every single night. But that's the fun of it, the suspense. I'll send the link in the description afterwards. Um, wow, two days until Shabbos Kodesh, 91 until Purim, start of the countdown at 105. Two weeks have gone by, time is flying, and what's better than the present? Mamash, we're together, we're growing together, we're learning together, and um, it's just beautiful to see you guys every single night, and you guys uh, just give me the, the deepest, deepest joy. Just seeing you guys, oh, what a bracha, what a bracha, what a bracha, thank you, Hashem. Atfilah b'shem kol Yisrael, for all the people that need refuah physically, mentally, spiritually, any area. Specifically for Sinai Reuven ben Mani, Shir Bas Basia, Pesach Reuven ben Yosef Asar, Bracha Bas Yehudis, Miriam Dodi Bas Chani Uchaven, Yonah Bas Basia, and every single Neshama in the world. From now on, Ribona Shailam, bring me genuinely close to you. Lavish me with kindness from your treasury of goodness. My eyes look to you, waiting for you to bring me to true prayer. Help me immerse myself in constant prayer until I come to grasp the true secrets of the Torah. Let me have a taste of the hidden light which you are going to reveal to the true tzaddikim in the future, the innermost secrets of the Torah. Let me gaze upon the pleasantness of Hashem and contemplate in a sanctuary. Bezrat Hashem, Chavra, we should all be able to tap into that hidden light. We all, uh, we all experienced it on Hanukkah. And our voter right now is to continue Hanukkah, live Hanukkah, and live with the Oregon news that Avi Karakowski knows so much about. Wow. We're continuing in the sugya of joy. Joy. Last night, we were talking about Reb Nassim Zyortzeit. Can't talk about Reb Nassim Zyortzeit without joy. Mamash. He was joy. Rabbi Nachman was joy. And um, we're continuing now. Before we do that, halakha l'maysa, halakha b'shem kol Yisrael, shem shemayim. The minimum amount for a bracha chrona. Last night we spoke about with a bari nefashos, al michia. Can you sit? Can you not sit? Can you be in the place that you ate? Can you not be in the place that you ate? So to be required and allowed to say bracha chrona, you need to eat a kezayis for ala eitz and al michia and bari nefashos. Within four minutes, Regarding drinking, though, you need to drink at least a reviz for Borei Nefashos and al Gafan, and the time it takes to drink a reviz, which isn't very long. Some, however, hold that even when you dr when drinking, you see Borei Nefashos if you've had a reviz within four minutes. Now everyone's thinking, what's a kazayas? Well, one regular, unless it's really small, is generally a kazayas. Two regular-sized cookies are generally a kazayas. In order to tell if you had a kazayas of sponge cake, you need to ask yourself if the cake you ate had been squished. Guys, this is cathodic. Would it have been at least the size of a large olive? In other words, if there's a lot of air, you should not count it towards the minimum measure. Luck with Misa. Moving on to joy. Finding the good points within ourselves is the deepest thing in the world. We've been speaking about it over the past several days. We're continuing. When a person recognizes the wrong he has done and how grossly materialistic and impure he is, he, be he can become so depressed that he is completely incapable of praying. He simply cannot open his mouth to God. Now, this is really scary. Really scary, but really beautiful because we're learning it and we're learning the secrets and how to find the good points and how to find the joy. And I can't help but look back. I don't even know if this makes sense. But when I was in high school, 
I was very involved with the game of Fortnite. I'm sure you guys have had some experiences in it. Maybe not, because you guys are the purest. You guys are the holiest. But I was playing hours upon hours of Fortnite a day. I remember I wasn't thinking on this level of how grossly materialistic I am, how, how the things that I was doing, maybe I shouldn't have been doing. Um, but just looking back at it, one of my holy rabbis from Fresh, he would always text me at like around 11 o'clock, 12, 12 a.m. for a marav, right? He would say, he would drive past my house, he'd come outside, I was like in my, in my pajamas, mamash in my pajamas playing Fortnite. He'd say, come out, five minutes, just come, five minutes of your time, right? So I come out, I do the marav, I do the five minute marav. I think we'll get into this later, but from all the hours that I've spent on Fortnite, I could have just focused on that Fortnite. But a little bit is good. That one good point, that five minute Mariv is the whole world. But imagine if I was just focusing on the six to eight hours I was playing Fortnite and say, you know what? I'm so involved in this that I'm not gonna go to Mariv. I'm not going to go for those five minutes. Or even if I do go for those five minutes, I'm going to look at the past and say, I played Fortnite for eight hours. But what about those five minutes? If we focus on those five minutes, a little bit is also good. Then we'll be able to open our mouths to God and say, give me six minutes. We're continuing. This is because of the deep sorrow and heaviness that overcome him when he sees his overwhelming distance from God. When playing Fortnite, I know we're all Hasidic masters here. Are you guys... Right? You can find the, deep, the deepest secrets within the game of Fortnite. That's how holy you guys are. But Jack Stabner in 12th grade, I don't think he was uh, had the eyes of the deepest secrets of the Fortnite. The building, you know, whether that's holy. You know. But maybe while Jack was playing Fortnite, he didn't feel so connected. He feel, felt distanced. And when the, his Rebbe asked him to go to Marv, he said, how can I even go to Marv? How can I even begin to enter a shul when I'm not wearing the proper clothing? However, this is a new perspective, a beautiful perspective. But finding your good points according to Rav Nachman can give you new life. Give you new life. In just one second, you could breathe. Right? We gave the example last night even if you know you have done wrong and caused damage and that you are far from God, you must search until you find the good that is still inside you. This will give you new life and make you truly happy. Right, the new life, just by being on Stealing Torah, I, I don't know what we were doing before, but before, um, you know, I, I was on my phone checking WhatsApp messages. That could be a holy thing. It could also not be a holy thing. But then I log on to Zoom and I'm with the holiest cover in the world. Just one second, you mean new life. And we're all filled with joy. You are certainly entitled to feel the greatest joy over every good point you find in yourself because each good point comes from the holy soul within you. Focusing on the white sheet of paper that we spoke about from Rav Dessler and not the little black point. That little black point in the, in the huge piece of white paper can destroy a person. But why is screaming Rav Dessler when we have so much white? So when we focus on the white and we search for the white within ourselves, the pureness and the beauty, exaggerate a little, or it's not exaggerating, it's just holy, it's pure holiness. And you become simcha over it, the new life enjoyable gain from this path will enable you to pray, sing, and give thanks to God. Now we need to focus on the deepest, deepest questions in our life, and then we'll open it up. What is joy, according to Rav Shlomo? What is the difference between sadness and joy? Joy really fills you. Whatever you have become, whatever you have becomes fuller, right? So that one good point can just burst into your whole body where you're just filled with joy. That one little good point. Sadness empties you out. I don't have this and I don't have that. So even what you have, you don't have. 
Chavra, this is the deepest line in the world. I'll say it again. Sadness empties you out. I don't have this. I don't have that. So even what you have, you don't have. Chavra, Bezrat Hashem, we should find that Nakuda Tova within ourselves and we'll always be filled with joy. Questions, comments, please feel free. Like, I'm just sad that I'm not there with you right now in person. That's all I have to say. But you're on for those you don't Zoom. know, I was for those you don't know, I was supposed to be in Israel on Monday. And I would be with Jack right now, but I'm not. But it's okay. Those are the shows in the future. Oh, the gates will open soon, physically. <laughs> the gates will open soon. Kalali, I miss you, dude. I really do. So happy you're on that. I'd, uh, I'd just like to wish a public happy birthday to Kara. Woo! Kira! I miss you. I miss you. Kira, I'm in. Are you in Mezhebush? Oh, you recognized it. Are you in Mezhebush? Are you in oh, the yeah. Shmuel? How did you know? <laughs> Look it up. Oh, oh, what a crazy guy. Wow. Wow. Kavra, strong stuff. Strong stuff. Is it like a birthday week, uh, Kara? It's, uh, yeah, I guess some, some, some of the Kara, it's a week. It's a week. It's fully a week. I mean, you said the day after the exam or the day or, or just after the exam was your birthday. I No, it's really weird is that I know I said it. people like someone else also messaged me like today. They somehow knew that. I didn't tell that to anyone else though, that it was, it was moved <laughs> up. This tapped week. In. Everyone's tapped in. But, but I wanted to say though about the uh, the idea that I was speaking about this with Nita yesterday. Um, a small concept from uh, this rabbi over here, uh, one of the lesser known uh, rabbis. Oh, it's in the show. You can't see it. <laughs> rabbi Harold Kushner. Uh, this book, when all you've ever wanted isn't enough. But one of the chapter names is called um, "Feeling No Pain, Feeling No Joy." So you mentioned there, like the idea. Um, like the kind of the, that balance of joy versus pain and what true joy is, what true pain is. But one of the biggest ideas that uh, I was, I was speaking about, we were having yesterday um, that he, he discussed in that book is the idea of like, the more you become um, an avoider of pain, like the, the more you allow yourself to hide from the pain and, and figure out different tactics to, to remove it from your life. Even if it's true negative, like some things are just negative, it's like painful. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure, but whatever, the more you become a person that's less capable of feeling pain, the less capable you are of feeling joy at the same time. It's like, I mean, we kind of know that there's a lot of balances in our life that are like that with like, you take one thing and you end up removing another as well. But it's just something that, it, but it, it's a very positive, like what you were saying, it, it, it actually just kind of can make you more happy. It's like the goal isn't to, um, isn't to, you know, just live like a, a you know, uh, unaware, blissful life is to experience true emotion. And if you're someone that experiences true emotion, you you really experience both uh, both ends of the spectrum, and you and you enjoy it because there's there's one God. It's all one. Nita just keeps saying it. This everything is just the one God. Something else. Who's about to say? You know, it's so crazy, Kira. You just revealed the deepest secret in Mezhebush, that Rav Nachman, all of his teachings were from his experiences. Right, so Rav Nachman himself went through the deepest, deepest struggles in the world that we don't even know about, that we can't even grasp. And yet he talks about joy. And the deepest joy. I think that's like the most beautiful thing that you said. Like, you got to go through the struggles of life. You got to be aware. You got to be tapped in. But how are we responding? So deep. Anyone else have questions, comments? Oh, Rabdani, Rabdani, Ramoshala, Shoshi, Aiden. All that we can say, sorry if it's a little bit loud, I'm in a library, which doesn't make sense, but whatever. Um, <laughs> get there. Um, just a minute, I'll speak in a minute. Someone else go. <laughs> Anyone else have anything to, to add? 
I think I think Moshe will have to uh, add his comment in the still in Torah <laughs> comments. Well, comments. I'm here now. Okay, good. Uh, good sir. We should know that even a little bit, even wanting to speak is a level. Give on. <laughs> Baruch Hashem, Chavar, we should all be healthy, happy, and successful. Whether we're in the streets of YU, warming up in the fire Breslov, the fire Breslov, whether you're in Queens, whether you're in Toronto, Mamash, you're going to get to Eretz Yisrael, Mamash, the gates should be open very, very soon. Whether you're in Stern, firing the Chavar up, RL University, learning the deepest, deepest depths about water. About water. <laughs> water. And uh, Hever, we should all join Avi Karkowski soon in Mezhebush. Mezhebush, oh my gosh. Mamish living Mezhebush. Ever since he left Uman a couple of years ago, he's just been living it. Just been living it. Oh, now the Balshemtov. Balshemtov. Hever, we should all be healthy, happy, successful. See you guys soon.